Hello, right, my people, and welcome to the Talking Point Show for Elevator TV and Radio. My name is Naida Fimat, US Organizer, as I always know, and uh, when I like to become the Elevator One of Sports. Uh, this uh, wonderful day, so we still day on this coronavirus thing. I'm going to still take a serious, so I'm not going to do a show, make a no mention. I'm going to take a serious, so washing of hand. Uh, somebody sent me a message yesterday, say, not only special hand wash, you the wash your hand. You can use omo, you can use soda, you can use keno soap, any soap. Uh, another thing will be say, go fist to help you, be say, use warm water to the wash your hand a lot. And then drink warm water, stay away from cold water, stay away from ice block, all those cold, cold things. And then learn how not to the touch your face that much. Learn how not to the touch everywhere. You can climb staircase now without touching the rim. Uh, get a wipe for hand if you, if it's possible. If you must go out and come in, get a wipe for hand. Always wipe your doorknob. Uh, one of the things why I do be say the, the wipe where I get to the wipe doorknob, I pour alcohol put. So you can do the same to pour alcohol put. Wipe your doorknob and all that stuff. I mean, uh, in, in, in person not fit to be careful for this matter. That's not just the truth. Person not fit they too careful. I ever see my friend they use wipe the wipe phone. I was like, oh, but I'll let you touch the phone, now. you know. So, but more just be careful so that on the other side of this Corona wahala, all of us go there life. All of us go see ourselves. All of us will count our family members and still say, okay, we beat them the way we take beat Ebola. I will say we survive them. Not just that one, I will say, I did look for. Well, we we'll go to the matters we'll be saying for granted. Mm. Many sporting activities still they suffer more and more. Now, we don't go past the level of cancellation, suspension, postponement to people counting their loss. Broadcast right, for instance, on the EPL, the loss don't reach about 750 million pounds. We be say clubs, big clubs, eh, go make for this one. So clubs, eh, eh he don't reach it for you. They don't they since they need to make money, so they want to sack people and uh, so job loss don't enter the matter but some of the clubs for the english football league for the lower league so uh, they don't beg the british government even for other european countries maybe a government help them because uh, as a US yes, see america for instance they don't pass a bill of two trillion dollars will be bill at fund and inside that two trillion dollar as i tell you now yesterday uh, for episode 30 see uh what do they call them uh they will give 250 billion as money to people where they see the work and uh, people with the end you get with a tea break and down for instance uh 1200 dollars which is 1200 dollars for anybody with salary day between 75,000 per annum and below and then like that like that like that then if you get children too for each peculiar you get uh 500 dollars that are for taxpayers so if you know the pictures just forget them uh, so other countries do that they beg their government say i beg bail us out so that uh our business is not going to collapse as America too also put 350 billion dollars as bill at fund for small small business businesses like our business and and the rest of them so with the hope see uh, uh it go up like that but Manchester United don't promise their fans uh that one to a good one where see uh, they will take care of the tickets they'll give a refund for the ticket I think there's many four home games that they won't play so so they will take give a refund for those uh games so the not calculator now <laughs> the money not be your they reach about uh, uh six million pounds where they calculate the entire value so look we see how it will go asana to the same thing asana also talks say normally the loan of uh, danny sebaios suppose end for june but because of this corona thing uh, so they want to stay Beg Real Madrid say once they suspend the whole the whole corona thing don't come up for granted they don't resume make they extend the loan make it be like the time when they take the off so they use that as part of the the loan extension but they're not gonna pay extra money but could say I be uh, you know say for Arsenal they don't also say they want to sell they want to drive not people say they want to drive people like the Mustafi uh Socrates your papa don't loss uh uh, uh Khalid, bodyguard uh Khalid uh Kolasinic, Said Kolasinic, uh Uzi bodyguard and a few other players like that so they want to drive them and Arsenal also put their mind say look if Obama Young say want to go either to Manchester United Barcelona Real Madrid or anywhere you want to go Paris and German if any if any of those clubs ready to pay 50 million made a call carry up they will use the money to buy another talking about uh using money Barcelona don't talk see that uh low low to ability that they call out for inter Milan whether they plan to buy so see if the deal come true, say because the money I bought between 120 to 150 million pounds 
that Inter Milan they ask for. If they finally get the go ahead to go sign them, say they want to put about five of their players, Arturo Vidal, Arthur, and a few other players, join the deal. My question be say, who tell the same time Milan want all those players? This kind of time, so eh, na time of money for hand, back for grand. If you don't get uh, cash, you don't go feel carry because na cash and carry period, na people do so. But we could see whether they go feel work the magic because anything is possible in this life. But uh, straight away, uh, make I go this small break. When I come back, I will contact the voices of the people with it. And uh, make I also tell you now, uh, from next week, some people don't talk, say, make I do interview, make I put interview segment for the show. So we'll try to do one, we we'll put interview segment. From next week, we'll interview some footballers and some people, generally, maybe coaches and the rest of them, and see how that one will go. But we'll try them all. If it not work, we'll stop about, we'll do a trial run and see how it will go. Uh -huh. So, we can just wait some more and come on. Voila, it's your boy Pablo. Yeah, I welcome to session with Pablo. This is the MP. Welcome to everything I think. Welcome to the first round on Elegate TV. This is Swiss Cook. You're welcome to the Talking Point Show. So, what makes a good story? Something that makes everything around me want to write. What are the challenges you face as an upcoming artist? Nothing good comes is my brother. I <laughs> <laughs> No, because the science you how to understand what we are doing, how they got there. Indidi is the best defense midfielder in the world right now. Indidi deserves to be on that platform. It's a Leg Better TV radio. All right, my people, now welcome back. Uh, so, now still the talking point show for Inside the Legbeta TV and Radio. And I say, my well, brother, uh, Edafi Matthew, you're going to like to come in the Legbeta One of Sports. So, we could go to the first person where we say he contributes something today. Matthias Jacob from Ikorodu. Boss, what do you from you? Hello, Legbeta TV Radio. Matthias Jacob is my name. Current location in Ikorodu, Lagos State, Nigeria. First of all, I want to thank God for the release of uh, Dario Joe, player of uh, a Yimba International that was kidnapped. We thank God that he came back sound and safe. And we believe that those ones that are still in captivity, God will release them. Having said that, we are in the midst of coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world. First of all, I would like to advise or everybody to take precautions let us follow the guideline of our of our health officials whatever we have been told to do to prevent this uh, pandemic to for spreading among ourselves we should try to do it because obedience, <laughs> obedience is the cure prevention is better than cure because now many people cannot travel you cannot move from your place but whenever you are Make sure you know you are not spreading the virus to another person close to you. If you know you are feeling you are not feeling well, please stay at home and make sure you do what is necessary. Uh, first of all, I know like Elegbet have said many times, the panic is what's killing people. Oh, what is going to happen to me if I got it? Just relax yourself, cool down yourself, and I know at the end of everything, things will be fine. And having said that, uh, I've been mean, here that many people have been saying that uh, a Nigerian footballer or the, the sport uh, personnel, they have not been make their donation or not. To me, oh, they are not mandatory to do it. Because if, if you want to, it's a voluntary issue. So if you no, know, if uh, anybody is calling them that they should do it or not do it or make donation to the government or to their state or to their loved one, is they are not mandatory to do it, it's their money. So they are the ones that know how to they know how they make their money, they know how to spend their money. So if they are not doing it, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's any issue. I pray that this Elegbeta TV radio show will still will continue to bring good news to us, will continue to grow, so that in the next two, three months, we'll be celebrating 10,000 viewers on YouTube, on the Elegbeta TV. God, thank and God bless you. That's my own contribution today. All right, thank you very much, Matthias Jacob. Uh, I'm being very happy when I hear 10,000 views. My, all my hair, all my dad stand up. You know, thank you very much. We pray for that day. That will be the day. Me, I'm not sure I'm going to sit down that day for do this show. If you happen, I'm going to jump up to do the show. But anyway, I shall let's keep our fingers crossed. I see, journey of a million mind begins with a step. I like the way you talk about um, uh, donation. Donation are free will. Thing. 
one of the easiest way to make donation is knowing that the people where you did donate to they go use the money judiciously and at this thing that they call integrity and trust over the years our nigerian government and politicians never really show integrity and trust so to even put money for their hand that be that would say we just say one give 200 million we with a questioner like this money will not say if he give them he give them to them they're not going to use our way so i want our footballers to do the same thing but one or the other i remember that my friend tony Bebo, do, uh, donate uh, hundred dollar to World Health Organization. There is there is a link to that too. If you want to donate to World Health Organization, you can donate from your Ni Nigerian account. You can donate me too. I don't do my small donation. Everybody like that. So there are different ways where these people donate. The thing is, not everybody they come out publicly to say, oh, I don't do this, I don't do that, and I think it's the best thing. So the way they add the the judge, the complaint, I think I just joblessness ninety one of them and. Uh, Yes, we celebrate the release of uh, Dario Joe. Uh, we just hope that uh, this thing will not happen again. But we'll go to the next person on the line. Hello, Elegbete TV Radio. This is Timothy Denbo. Yes, I am calling you from Ipaja. So, a quick one. I am relating this to Ajiboye. Yes, sometimes when we talk of having goalkeeping issues, I always remember watching Ajiboye at the under 17 world cup in 2007 even though i was still young then but i saw his clips even especially the final game and the penalties received do you ever want to suppose right now do you know where ajiboye is currently and aside ajiboye alone there have been many tournaments we have had and this we have seen players like this that later we will not get to hear about them elevated one do you think there's one politics that is not making this kind of players get into our national team or it's just these players themselves that fail to develop and grow into being big players in the future thank you all right thank you, Daimbo. Thank you very much uh the thing about daily Ajib, i don't really know exactly what you do right now but the thing about daily Ajibo, you can look across the world to the same thing happens not be just Nigeria, not be Nigerian thing, especially for goalkeepers. First, goalkeepers take a very long time to retire. I mean, Vincent Yama started in 2002 and stayed uh, like 15 years. In that period, we've had like you know plenty under 17 tournament. We've seen Dela Jiboye, we've seen uh, uh, Alan Pasu, a whole lot of Zoho just coming into the light now. It takes time for the person with the front to come out for position, and in that period, so. You go also hope see the players when they come in through the rank, they will get good club, they will develop through the process very well. You see, success at under seventeen eh, not be guarantee at all for anybody to be successful in football career because at under seventeen you still get plenty impediment in front of you. Things like what's the club to go? You know, say this team will not get good league so they affect many things. Normally for Europe, you know, when the players go under seventeen World Cup or under seventeen tournament, as soon as they come back, then they go back to their local club and then they go play they never they really think of hey i want to go sign for abroad nothing like that but our players once they go under 17 come back one they don't be past every club in the npfl and then no club not be all the club for europe now i want to sign them maybe now one maybe you want exceptional player here and there and they go sign from that point these guys go begin struggle so those things they contribute to that not be necessarily politics i don't i don't believe it's politics it's about opportunity and the fact that uh because we're not get good football structure down here it will affect how our players they evolve in terms of their growth if you go under 20 world cup and you perform exceptionally well uh -huh, we can start to mark you up from there look at when we go under 20 in 2005 in holland look at all the players we perform well we could monitor their growth but for under 17 under 17 truly eh, in a certain point you you go then lucky all them kelechi natural victor sime they are highly lucky to do where they did and i got do for them even european players south american players at under 17 that brazilian team that won the under 17 world cup most of their players now they, they, they did their domestic league see they struggle to find their way to the top the problem we will get with our under 17 is that our league no good if to say our league good and can absorb them we're not going to notice all those things where you didn't notice so because they're just coming into the league then they're going to do well but i think uh, there was a time where De La Dubai was in one of the local league clubs i don't forget which club i remember in 2017 i think i saw him in Kano. yeah when elevator tv started officially like when we started when we started doing our own work independently 
but I don't know where it did Nasha. But let's just hope that it can resurrect his career again. But then competition is very, very stiff. Oh. Competition high. Some people don't be around the national team for forever. I say one them. Uh, uh, what's it called? I just recently I begin to see light. And then you get them daylight in Nubia where they see the whole city will come back. Costing a GD. So the competition will be high. That you perform for that 17. No necessarily me say you will jump into the line line. Because okay, got it. Nobody shall fit trust an under 17 goalkeeper. Make a goalkeeper super egos. Experience no day. Now I reach. You're shot for him. You're not going to fit. So all of those things see. They can't against goalkeeper Shah, but let's see how time goes. This is Tonji talking from First Talk. Um, I want to ask that um, when you started working in your business, when you started from from ITV Brilla and all those places that you worked, are there some decisions or some things that you, you think you did that mistakes that you would like to share that you think you wouldn't like to make again? I know experiences are part of human lives and then they've made them who you are today not like regrets actually but then decisions that i think people like us maybe when when we start working or <laughs> or maybe when we reach certain points in our lives that you think okay I, I took this mistake and i don't think this person should make this same mistake thank you very much uh Tsunji, thank you for all this your line of questioning it is with me uh I think my kind of life, eh, my kind of life is not the type that I really think there is mistake in anything that I do. First, I'm an each hiker. In other words, I'm an adventurous person. So I'm not really as regular as they come. I live my life on the spur of the moment, like, okay, I want to do this thing. There are so many things that I've done in my past that, you know, when I did that, people look at me like, Idi Chris, yeah, you know, man. Let me give you some, some very good example. Between 2003 and 2007, I traveled, like, if I just see it, okay, let's take for instance, there was this stadium that was built in Hamburg. I just see them online for Facebook. I traveled on the spot of the moment. I asked my travel agent, you know, arranged my flight. I went to Germany. I met one girl on social media, for instance, and I traveled. So when it comes to job, I think the only maybe something that I did that I shouldn't have done that it was okay. What I when I went into radio, my original goal was to stay for ten years, and then after that, I will find my way. So this is what happened. I went in, in 2004. By 2014, it was 10 years. When I went to the World Cup and came back, I should have stopped working in radio and then go start elevated TV, start on my own. But you see, it was the first time that Bella was sending some, some people to the World Cup. So I felt if I just come back from the World Cup and I left, it would have affected other people. They're like, ah, no, we cannot send anybody to the World Cup again. That's how we send it after to the World Cup and then he abandoned us so i felt okay let me also give them the benefit of my experience the things that i learned because i really learned that five weeks in brazil i learned a whole lot now looking back that was my mistake because my time was up in 2014 that's just the truth my time was up everything i did from 2014 2015 2016 to 2017 up up, up until when i when i was fired was living on borrowed time because even me going to work i remember i had like my resignation later in my bag i was carrying it back and front i spoke to a few managers that i'm done like i'm tired and it's not good when you're working somewhere you are tired you no longer feel the energy to walk and you're still going there i sometimes i look back and i'm like i'm amazed at the fact that even though i was tired i was still able to give my best i was still able to perform very well in those three years but i think that if i had left at that time by now elevated tv this this company would be somewhere way 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 up there because the experience that i came back from the world cup with all of the things that i came back with would have added value to it but i mean it's the only thing that i regret other than that everything is fine and maybe apart from that i should have married earlier like when i was 25 26 27 so that by now my my children will be very big but then life is life 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 answers to you the way it is but i don't think business way in business eh I've really not made any wrong decisions, any mistake. I just know that I have challenges in front of me, but career-wise, business-wise, I've been the most privileged guy in this world. The most privileged guy. Because when I have a never say die attitude, I have a yes we can attitude, I have a 
let's go and get it done just do it kind of attitude so it's hard for me to see one of the things that i've done i'm like oh i shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have done this i should have done this better no one I'm, i give my all in anything that i do i give my all and i'll still do it again and again if you rewind the clock the only thing that would have changed was me that maybe i would have resigned by 2014 uh my, when my next renewal came up, I'd have just resigned and then moved on. But other than that, everything is fine. Let's go to the last caller on the show. This is your boy Isaac. Uh, current location, Bagada. Though I'll soon be eating the road. Quick one. My question. Um, as a business uh, person, I'm always... Uh, uh, putting up with uh, debt management. Um, as an entrepreneur, digital entrepreneur, Mr. Edafi, I want your advice for people out there and someone like me, how best to manage debt. Uh, I must tell you, no business you want to do that uh, if you want to grow, you secure loans, you have people owing you money, you know, all sorts. Uh, since I've been following you, uh, I know, I think your days of uh, Izzy Baba Nawa, someone owing you around a uh, uh, million plus. Uh, I just want to know, how are you able to deal with this and still keep to the growth of your business and the... Uh, you know, mean, uh, uh, put life, family, and still keep things going. Just want to know. Thank you, Elegate TV. Isaac, <laughs> for this one, I don't get advice. You said my biggest pain, my biggest pain. The reason I left Babana was the fact that they, they made promises, uh, we had agreements, and then they were not paid, and I was pissed. I was pissed, especially if I do a job. If I do a job for you, and it's something that I respect like Zamaji for for the rest of my life. That man they owe. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You know they owe at all. What you say go pay you, now I go pay you. You know, you know you owe. But that was the challenge that I had to face because it was the first time. No, it wasn't the first time. Master Jacob or two held my money back. But it was the first time in a normal working place where I would walk and they wouldn't pay me. And I, you know the funny thing? Everybody around me felt it was normal. And then I was saying, we were making money. You see, the thing is, if you owe me and we're, the work I'm doing, we're not meeting targets, we're not delivering. I know we get mad to talk. But then I was meeting targets, I was delivering, I was winning matches, the team was getting promotion, everything was going fine. I was bringing in the best players. I was turning the club into the best club in the land at that category. And then I wasn't getting paid. So I just wrote my resignation letter. And I left and everybody was shocked. Like, how do you do it? Uh, recently, I even saw one of the guys that, are, that was working with the colonel. Like, you know, because it was a colonel in the army, it was in Bonnie Camp. Uh, people felt like you cannot just walk into an army cantonment like that and then tell a senior army officer, an intelligent officer, this kind of thing. Uh, well, uh, well, I was always like, I'm a worry boy. Fear is not part of what's in my DNA. So I told him and I, I left. I went to live my life. Uh, now that I start my own business, okay, I've done diesel business before. Maybe people don't know that one too. I've also had to deal with debt. Sometimes somebody is owing you seven million. There's a, there was a supply with the two truck, uh, nine point six million era to this very day since November, November twenty sixth, two thousand and nine. To this very day, that money has not been paid. And sometimes it pisses you off. Sometimes you just have to learn to live with it. In this business that we're in. Somebody will call you, come and shoot a video for us, come and do an advert for us. And now then the money will tell they pay our staff, they come in. This one will say they pay me, they piss me off. An Olympian, a Nigerian, you know, after somebody beg you, like, okay, okay, let's say you negotiate, this thing is five million. Let's say I come, no, 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 I don't get five million. I will pay you one million. It's okay, let's do it. And then the person pay five hundred thousand, and then you're expecting the other balance, hey, no, they come. You know, even they take your call, nothing, nothing. You know, that's very, very annoying. And then there's quite a lot of people in the industry so i think i've come to accept that debt is part of what goes on one of the things that i've not done and i keep getting people offering me oh come and take loan here come and take loan there my fear of loan is this business is not an instant yield it's not a low-hanging fruit so if i take loan 
and then tomorrow you come in and then you know equipment get destroyed like the other day we lost two cameras okay we lost you lost equipment overnight and then you can shut down generator packing up all those things but then it's business this is nigeria you have to deal with it i don't even think say debt is not the biggest problem why i get the biggest problem why i get in this business is electricity and then paying for internet and not getting value you don't want to know how many internet service providers that have changed in the last one year and generator having to fix generator every day as i do and i do look for about five million air to get solar panel an inverter so that i can tamper down on generator because every single day we spend about eight stars on that on generator since we're using ready for our diesel generator don't pack up those are challenges but you see uh there are two options here I'm either going to go take a job from somebody who is able to withstand this pressure and set up his company and be doing yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, and not grow anything. Or I'm going to stand and do this one. Let me let me let me be fair to everybody. When we get to the point where these videos that we're putting up now is hitting hundred thousand views, and people are like, ah, you did do twenty-five views, you look at hundred thousand views, yeah, we'll get there. Believe me, we'll get there. There was a time where we could not even get past five views. So when we get to 100,000 views, I can confidently beat my chest that I don't care who is owing me or who is not owing me. Everybody's working here will be fine. I look forward to the day where my staff will be driving their own choice cars, calling me that, oh, this is my, vac this is my leave. I want to go on vacation to this place. Let the company just write a note for me so that I can take to the embassy. Those are the days that I'm, I'm looking forward to. And it's going to happen. Uh, but between now and then, the in-between is the problem. For debt, I've just resigned to faith that this is people's character. And then the economy is also not good. Some people really owe you because they owe you. That they don't have. They're also expecting money from somewhere else and somebody is not paying them and there's nothing they can do. But it's just the attitude, Sha. When somebody is owing you and is not taking your call and is not the one calling you to tell you I'm sorry, uh, that, that's really, really bad. There are some people one day I will just call them out on, on, on this show. But I'm still taking my time. I'm still looking at it. And then we hope that as we go, uh, people will tell us oh, on your show, we want to put our logo on the show, we'll pay you this, we want to put this, uh -huh. once we start getting those small, small adverts, maybe it will help us. Well, I hope that um, you guys will enjoy this show. Uh, don't forget to refer the show to other people. Let the numbers grow. The numbers grow, we'll all be happy. Uh, somebody sent me a message that when will you start doing giveaway? And I said to the person that my dream of giveaway is not to send people, oh, uh, send me your bank account and I send you 5,000. My dream of giveaway is to say, where is that? Do you know that person that their life needs changing? And then we'll go there and give the person maybe a millionaire to start business. Or somebody that needs a car. A family. There are some families that need a car. I, I, I've been there, so I know. Family that need a car, like a husband and a wife with five children or three children. And then they are struggling. They need a car. Or somebody who wants to do Uber business. All those kind of giveaways is what I want to do. We're not there yet. I'm not going to go do all those so that our Instagram following will rise, so that our Twitter following will rise. Uh, I'm not against the people who are doing it too. But when we start doing our giveaway, you will know. We will touch life and improve people's condition with our giveaway. Having said that, thank you very much to my producer. Yes. Uh, Magdona Chukwe Maker Apologia. You are fantastic. Thank you very much. And thank you to everybody who contribute. And thank you to everybody who view, like, comment, and follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. My name is Edafi Matthew S. Yogane. You love to call me the one of sports. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification button, share, and comment on the YouTube channel. That's why I tell you now. Here we are.